Thanks for visiting the Refuge Church YouTube channel. We're glad you tuned in and we pray that you're blessed by the message. We join the service already in progress. Amen. So, last week I'm talking to Steve before church. And Steve, for those of you that don't know, is an extremely busy man, right? He's running a business. He's the pastor of the church. Um, so I said, Steve, you know, let me know if you ever need me to fill in or, you know, like I, I, can, I can help out. You can get a little break, um, you know, next week, just whenever. And he goes, oh, yeah, next week's cool. <laughs> so, but, you know, after church on Sunday, my dad's joking around. He's like, so what do, we, do you have anything? I'm like, I don't have anything. Um, so he goes, well, maybe we'll do like a Q&A with the elders or something, right? So um, there's no Q&A today, but um, maybe, maybe we'll do that next time. Um, so that's how I ended up here. But I do believe that God has a message for us. We're going to pick up where we left off from last week and explore part of Philippians 4, and then we'll kind of jump around from there. Um, I do want to read just a quick joke that I think is somewhat applicable to today's message. It's called The Anxious Cab Driver. And of course, God's going to put me up here to talk about anxiousness and a couple other things. God definitely has a sense of humor. Um, but that is definitely an area of my life that he's, he's continuing to grow me and teach me. Um, so it says, a taxi passenger uh, tapped the driver on the shoulder to ask him a question. The driver screamed, lost control of the car, nearly hit a bus, went up on the footpath, and stopped centimeters from a shop window. For a second, everything went quiet in the cab. Then the driver said, look, mate, don't ever do that again. You scared the daylights out of me. The passenger apologized and said, I didn't realize that I, a little tap would scare you so much. The driver replied, sorry, it's not all really your fault. Today is my first day as a cab driver. I've been driving a funeral van for the last 25 years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... Like I said, that's somewhat applicable to what we'll be getting in today. Um, so last week, for those of you that were here or listening to the message, we talked about spiritual maturity, right? And, and that was kind of the overlying uh, message that Steve had for us. And as I look at spiritual maturity, there, there's a couple things that, that come to mind, and um, we'll kind of jump back in two verses of three and move forward. But today, there, there's kind of three topics that I feel like the Lord gave us. It's, it's being heavenly minded. Um, which I do believe ties into spiritual maturity, walking with God and hearing from God, and then following your heart's desire, which I definitely believe ties into that as well. Um, but spiritual maturity, you know, Steve talked a lot about different aspects, but I want to go back really quick to um, ver or chapter 13 and explore 20 and 21. So in Philippians, okay, so this is where Steve left off. Um, and it says in 20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the work, working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Um, and, and, I, and I was really thinking about the idea of um, our citizenship being in heaven, right? And when it comes to, to spiritual maturity, I think a, a large element is having the, the heavenly perspective, right? Um, when I was young growing up, I remember, and this is going to sound completely ridiculous, but I remember like not wanting God to come back yet because I wanted to get old enough to have a dirt bike, you know, and I, and I wanted to get old enough to, you know, whatever, like stuff like that, you know, because that was where my maturity level was, you know? Um, fortunately, I've moved on since then, and, and, you know, the Lord can come back any day now. Um, but... My, my point is that that perspective was, was what Steve was describing, you know, as, as kind of um, not a mature Christian. My, my, I didn't have a heavenly focus. I had a kind of here and now and a very mater materialistic viewpoint, right? And, and I think that as we grow, as our walk continues to grow, um, having that heavenly perspective definitely helps us in the here and now, right? Um, and having that hope is, is going to help us to deal with life's challenges, deal with life's trials, right? I, I think of Paul when he says, uh, to die is gain, right? But it's better that I stay here for you. That's a super mature, 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 a super mature perspective, right? Um, and, and so I think that that's something to be desired and sought after for us as well. 
you know, and, and, I, and I'll give you guys kind of a silly example. So years ago, uh, Tiff and I moved into the, to our house that we have now, and we had a, a handful of friends come over and help us paint, right? And when it comes to house stuff and, and decorating, I'm, I'm kind of like hands off, like whatever, babe, whatever you want. Um, I, I just really don't care a lot, you know, I mean, she, she can pick stuff out. Um, so she picks out all the colors, we have friends come over and everybody helps us. And I'll give Becca, for those of you that know where Becca fell in a little shout out, um, because the, we have a living room and so Tiff wanted to do these three walls a certain color and then that back wall, she wanted to do a different color, right? So we're finished painting that back wall the different color and then Becca Fallon gets these, these color and she starts painting like the whole wall. And I'm just standing and they're going like, what the heck is going on? But for those of you that know her, you'll understand and it's, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, but what Tiff did is she picked this like creamsicle orange color for our bedroom, right? And mixed with white ceilings, I felt like I was living in a creamsicle. Um, you'll have to ask her why she picked it. I have no idea. She'll probably not have any idea why she picked that color. But we had that for years. And probably about six months ago, she wanted to do like an off-white color, right? So how many of you guys have painted before? Okay, you have to tape the baseboards, you have to tape the ceiling. It is a pain, right? I mean, half the time is the prep, and then you gotta do the paint and pull, pull everything down. And it, It's just, it's not my cup of tea. Um, but she wants to do the paint before Brielle came, so before the baby comes, right? So me being the great husband that I am, right? Um, I, I said, okay, great, pick out the paint, we'll do that. Um, and, you know, within that, I, I had the, the understanding that the room was going to look much better. I wouldn't wake up in the morning and desire to eat a creamsicle. It, it just, it was going to be a lot nicer place to live in, right? And then I'm, I'm serving my wife and I'm doing something for her. Um, so what that did, though, that perspective allowed me to when I was painting, you know, I was listening to worship music, I got to spend some alone time, she's pregnant, so she's not in there a lot because of the fumes, um, but it ended up being a really good time that I could spend with the Lord, and, and I was just on a mission. I mean, I'd come out and eat real quick, and then I'd go back, and I, I did it, I knocked it out in a whole weekend, um, but I was on this mission, and I was able to be effective in that moment because I had the understanding, the perspective of, of where we were going, you know what I mean? So. My, my point is, when we have that right perspective and that hope and knowing that we're going to spend eternity with the Lord, um, I, I believe that that helps us be effective, that helps us have the right understanding of, of this moment. You know, I mean, we all go through trials, we all go through difficult things, um, but if we can continue to not get caught up in our immediate circumstances and, and understand where we're going, I, I think that will really help, okay? And I, and I believe that's, that's a part of that spiritual maturity. Right? Does that make sense? All right, so let's dive into Philippians 4. Therefore, my beloved, long, longing for, brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore, I'm going to totally butcher these, so I apologize, um, Edia, and I implore Sinachi um, to be of the same mind in the Lord. I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Um, just really quick, women, man, like you guys totally, I don't, I don't know if it's because that female side that's more emotional, but you guys just hear from the Lord. and um, I, I think it's awesome that Paul points that out, that these women are just serving with him in the gospel, the further of the gospel. Um, so yeah, just thank you for that. Um, and then four, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Okay? Now, here's, here's the part that kind of slaps me in the face. Um, be anxious for nothing. I'll just stop right there, right? So if you're anything like me, that, what, four words, like it, it almost frustrates me. You know what I mean? Like I read it and I, like, I almost get frustrated. I'm like, really? Like nothing, like give me a break. You know, let's be realistic, God, come on, right? Um, and, and, and so I just kept reading, and we'll read it in a second, but, um, you know, I was, I was actually talking to my dad, I think it was like a couple weeks ago, and we we're talking about the, the anxiousness, right? Like be, being anxious for stuff. And, um, you know, I think especially nowadays, I mean, there's stuff that's thrown at us like every two seconds. Um, but the anxiousness does come from, what? We've talked about this before, a lack of trust, a lack of faith, right? 
we, we have a certain viewpoint of how things should happen, how things should work out, how things should play out. Um, and when there's, there's little curveballs, right, we start to get anxious. If things aren't going the way that I think they're going to go, right, which ultimately goes back to that lack of trust. We talked about that a little bit last time I was up here. Um, and, you know, I, I would prefer to have my ducks in a row, right? Um, I can't remember the last time that my ducks were in a row. You know, I mean, that's just life, whether it's work, home, like just life, right? Um, but as we grow in intimacy with the Lord, as we learn to walk with him and have that heavenly perspective, right? I, I think that that anxiousness goes away. You know what I mean? Um, if, if, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm about to sit in that chair and, and if I don't think that's going to hold my weight, I'm going to be a little uneasy about it. You know what I mean? But if I have that confidence, that assurance, and so on and so forth, then, then I'm, I'm not uneasy. Um, but learning to walk with the Lord, guys, you know, we, we have so many distractions nowadays, right? I was on YouTube yesterday, and I even, like, I watched this clip that was talking about, like, marketing and stuff, and it's insane. Insane, like, how they design ads and do different things, and I mean, stuff that was like, like I took a marketing class in college and it was really fascinating to me, but it's like, it's, it's mind blowing to me, like how they just throw stuff at us all the time, technology, you know, our fast pace of jobs, where we live, like all this stuff, like we're just bombarded with stuff, right? Um, and, and I think that in today's society, it's, it's somewhat of a challenge to learn to walk with the Lord, right? To be intimate with the Lord. Um, and, and, I, and I think that's part of the enemy's tactic. Um, is to take us away from living in that moment, right? He tries to take us to the past. He tries to take us to the future, anywhere but now. And, and I believe that we, we continuously get robbed of our joy because we're going everywhere else in our minds and everything else, right? Um, but what I want to encourage you guys of is um, as we learn to seek the Lord, as we learn to walk with the Lord, as we learn to discern and hear the Holy Spirit, that anxiousness goes away, right? As we learn to walk with him and trust him and build that intimacy, that anxiousness does go away and, and having that godly and heavenly perspective. And I want to encourage you guys, I, all of you here, myself included, we, we can hear from the Lord a heck of a lot more than we think, right? And I think part, and just bear with me, but part of it is that we're just not listening, Right? And I was thinking about this during worship, is we sit here and we throw our requests to the Lord, you know, God, what about this? What about this? And then we just don't listen, you know? Um, I, I'm looking at Tiff, and she can attest, like, this. I, I'm trying to work on this, babe, um, but I'm, like, notorious for, like, asking her a question, like, babe, what's for dinner? And then, like, I go somewhere else, and 10 minutes later, I'm like, babe, what's for dinner? And she's like, I just told you. <laughs> like, like, seriously. You know, and, and I have a really good memory. I can remember conversations. The problem is I'm just not always paying attention. You know what I mean? But, but learning to discern and, and understand um, that, that Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? How many times have you guys been in a conversation and like this alarm goes off in your head and goes, don't say that, and you just go ahead and say that? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Steve and I joke about it too, you know? It's like, um, but... but Learning to walk and, and discern that, that Holy Spirit, that, that intimacy, right? And, and just being quiet. You know, I'll give you guys a couple examples. Um, you know, I was, uh, there's a lot of changes going on at my work a couple months ago, and I was trying to figure out, like, what reps to put here and territory stuff and all that. And I just got to the point where I was like, okay, God, this is your team. Like, who do you want where and what, how do you want to design this and how do you want to do this? Um, and right away, he's like, okay, put this person here and do this and, and do that, right? So I'm like... Okay, and, and at least for me, guys, like I have, I've never heard God audibly. I know people that have, um, but it's, it's that just inward, like I said, that discernment where you know the Lord speaking to you. Um, sometimes it's a heart's desire, but um, a lot of times for me personally, it's just you kind of discern what he's telling you and the message, right? Um, and so I'm driving to the office. I get to the office 15 minutes later. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this because that's what God told me to do. Um, and he obviously knows everything, right? Um, and two seconds later, my recruiter calls and says, hey, I have the perfect candidate for you in this territory. Well, that one just became open because God told me to move this person here and do this. I wasn't even aware of it. 
You know what I mean? And, and it's, it's a lot of that, that stuff like that, because like I said, he knows everything. You know, and, and it, for me, it's just like really cool to sit there and go, man, like I, I have the creator of the universe on my side. You know, anything in my life I can bring to him and, and I can learn to discern and follow him. Sometimes it's a quick answer. Sometimes it might take a little longer. But I do believe that he's going to, he, he desires to have a personal relationship with us, right? You look at Adam and Eve. They walked with the Lord, right? You look at all these guys in the Old Testament. They heard from God. Now, God spoke to Moses, spoke to the people, but all these people, like, they spoke and had intimate relationships with God. Jesus came. He interacted with people, right? And then when he left, he gave us what? The Holy Spirit. You know? And so these aren't new concepts, but I, I feel like, like in today's world, in today's society, like, we get so caught up in stuff, it's like, oh, yeah, I can totally walk with the Lord. I can totally discern what the Holy Spirit is telling me. You know, there, there is, and, and this story that I'm about to tell you is, has, it's not about the money, okay? Like, I'm, I'm not preaching on money here. Um, but there's a guy that was a, a businessman, right? And this was years ago. And I, and I heard a, a, a preacher tell the story. And um, he, he did very well. And a lot of people would come to him and share their ideas on, on different investments and business ideas and that kind of stuff. And he would take those ideas and he had like a prayer closet at home. And he'd go seek the Lord, and he wouldn't decide what he was going to do, whether or not he was going to invest in that, until he heard from the Lord, right? Sometimes he'd be in there for days. He'd come out, eat, go back in, and just really seek the Lord. And this guy became a multimillionaire and never, ever lost money on an investment, ever, not once. And, and, he, and he said he would have situations where somebody would come to him, and he'd be like, oh my gosh, like, that's a great idea. I should probably invest in that. But he'd take it to the Lord, and there's times where the Lord's like, no, that's, that's not good. There's other times where he's like, this makes zero sense. This, this is not going to make any money whatsoever. Um, and then the Lord would say, I want you to invest in this. And then he got into full-time ministry. Because like I said, it's, it's not about the money. But the point is that he would literally spend the time to seek the Lord, to, to look to the Lord, um, and really be able to, um, he, he desired to move when the Lord told him to move. Right? Um, I heard somebody else get, you know, the illustration, and they used this metaphor, which I thought was awesome. Um, when Jesus was baptized, right, the, the, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. And he was saying, if you had a dove on your shoulder, right, and you were walking with that dove, how would you walk? Very careful, right? And you'd be conscious of what that dove's doing. Every single step that you make, you would have that consciousness of, of, not wanting to spook the dove. You know what I mean? So, so how can we in our own lives get to the place where we're choosing to walk with the Lord step by step? Because I, I promise you, as we do these things, the anxiousness just goes away. You know what I mean? So I used to kind of think of it like it would frustrate me because I was like, oh, yeah, like, don't be anxious. Like, cast your cares on the Lord. Okay, God, take it. But then you're sitting there like, it's not working. Like, take it. You know what I mean? Like, it, but... Like I said, it's, it's, it's the intimacy. It's, it's the learning to um, really trust him. And, and he knows everything, right? Like, that's awesome. He, everything. There's nothing that he doesn't know. He knows the beginning from the end. So why the heck am I not going to him for everything? Right? Okay, so let's keep going. So six, verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to the Lord. So, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, so we're, we're talking about this. Supplication is like seeking, asking, want, ask earnestly, right? Um, you know, Jesus, I look at his life, and, and he only did what the Father told him to do, what he saw the Father tell him to do. You know, we're talking about that guy in the prayer closet. Jesus went to his prayer closet, the wilderness, you know what I mean, and really, really sought the Lord. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, um, let's jump over to Luke 11. And I want to explore this a little bit more as far as really seeking the Lord. Um, we're going to start in verse 5. Okay? And yeah, we got it. Okay. So this is Jesus talking. Uh, okay. And, in verse 5, And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend, and go to him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, 
lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is sh now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though, he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Let's keep going. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So going back to the seeking, the prayer and supplication, right? Um, and, and going to the Lord with thanksgiving. But to, to me, like I, I read that and, it, and it's kind of convicting, to be honest with you, right? Like how many times have I knocked at the door and then just t taken off? You know what I mean? Like honestly, like I knock at the door while well, he's like, okay, nobody's home. Like I'm, I'm out of here and I'm on to the next thing, right? We talked about the just being distracted, you know, I mean, if, if we had like a ticker of how many thoughts go through our head on a daily basis, it would probably be insane. Um, but to have that confidence from the, in knowing, I mean, this, this, this parable is, is crazy to me. You know, if, if we're, Psalm 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart, right? Well, the key is desire, delight in the Lord, right, first of all, and then he'll give you the desires of your heart. If we have desires of our heart and we're continuing to ask and seek and knock, right, there's only two outcomes. There's either, if it's not in God's will, he will change my desire. I'm confident of that, right? Or I will receive whatever I'm desiring because it's in God's will, right? Those are the only two possible outcomes. If I'm in God's will and if I'm delighting in him and I'm seeking him. You know what I mean? If I'm sitting here and asking for a Ferrari over and over again, that. I'll tell you, for me, is is probably is not in God's will for my life. I, I would, I would probably kill myself. Um, but does that make sense? And and think of these situations, guys. In in life, what what have you just kind of knocked a little bit and then taken off with? You know what I mean. So I, I want to do something really quick. Um, if you guys can just take a second, like text yourself, write on a piece of paper, but think of something in your own life today that you feel like is a desire from the Lord, that you feel like is in line with his will, write it down and let's really pray about this and let's, let's continue to seek, ask, and knock. You know what I mean? So I'll give you just uh, 60 seconds and, and just take a minute and, and really, I, I want you to write it down and I'll tell you why in a second. All right, so I want you guys to write it down for a couple reasons. Number one, for yourself, right, to take to the Lord and really pray about it um, and, and so that we can see God move. But I also would love it if, as a body, as, as God unfolds these, as these things unfold and God answers these prayers and God moves and works in your lives, um, I mean, I would love it if you guys would share it too, you know what I mean, with a body. So, um, you know, one Sunday... God moves, answers these, you know, please share them with us because I think that's super encouraging. Uh, and I think as a body, that's, that's a great time of fellowship. Um, but, and I, and I think all of us can really 
be encouraged by seeing God move. Um, so, you know, for those of you that are open, let's, let's really pray about that. And, and I would love to hear how God's moving in your own lives. You know what I mean? Um, but let's really seek after the Lord and make sure that we're not knocking and then taking off. So in everything. So, like, for me, like, like I love that. You know what I mean? Because Jesus is just, like, I just picture him talking to me. You know what I mean? Like, Chris, like, just talk to me, man. Like, come to me. Ask. I will be given to you. You know what I mean? Like I said, like, let's, let's make sure that we're in line with his will and, our, and, our, and we're delighting in the Lord. You know what I mean? Our, our heart's desire is, is centered on him. Um, but the, the more our relationship grows, the more our, our desire and our, our heart is led by him. Um, but that's, like, that's crazy. You know, like, that's super powerful. You know what I mean? It's, it's not this wishy-washy, like, hey, ask me, seek, maybe I'll reveal it to you, maybe I won't, like, I'll let you know, we'll see what happens, we'll roll the dice, right? Like, I, I think a lot of times that's what we do, you know? And, and so, like I said, I, you know, the, the point I feel like the Lord really get, wants us to understand today is, is I think a lot of times we're just not listening, you know what I mean? So we're not continuing to ask and we're not listening to the answers. You know what I mean? Um, all right. So let's go back to Philippians. One second here. Okay. So, and, and we're going to start in verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Um, and and I, for me, like, I, I think of, you know, we, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I mean, the Bible continuously refers to the Lord as, as the God of peace. Um, and and I, I believe that goes back to verse 6, talking about the anxiousness, talking about knowing him intimately, having the confidence to know that if I'm in line with his will and I'm asking, I will receive. You know what I mean? Uh, there's a ton of peace with that. And then the heavenly perspective right? To be effective and live in the moment. There's a ton of peace with that too, you know? Uh, like I said, it's not my favorite thing in the world to paint, but I was on a mission, man. Like I, I was good. I was worshiping. Like that was, that was a, a good time, but it's because I knew what was coming, right? In verses, let's go down to eight. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Okay? So, how many of you guys watch the news? Or like catch up on the news and stuff, right? Um, do you ever, and I, I mean, I've done this, do you ever go through the news and look at articles and then like 30 minutes later, you've kind of bounced around and look at different articles and you're, what's your mood like? Your mood elevator, right? It's like super depressed, you know what I mean? Um, and, and I don't think, like I don't at all subscribe to the, I think this is a, a life from the enemy as far as like ignorance is bliss or what I don't know won't hurt me. Like, like I said, I, I think, I mean obviously the gospel, right? Like you, you want to know the gospel, you want to know the Lord. Um, so I don't think that that's a good way to live your life. I don't think we need to take the ostrich approach and stick our head in the sand. Um, I think we need to be aware. Um, but the point is, like, what are we choosing to focus on continuously, right, and, and constantly, and getting caught up in certain conversations and, um, you know, dwelling on, you know, the, the, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now. You know, I mean, it seems like every day there's, there's something in the news that kind of makes you go like, wow, like, that's pretty gnarly, you know, and then you almost get to the point where nothing surprises you anymore. Um, but let's just make sure that we're, our minds, right, renewing of your mind is, is focused on, on the things of the Lord. You know, I mean, we just read um, things are noble, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good. Um, if, if we don't have that focus, it's very difficult to have that mature heavenly perspective, right? Because we're, we're getting super caught up. Uh, and a lot of times, I believe that when we get caught up in like the news and the things and you know, whatever's going on, a lot of times, it, what it does is it causes us to go down the road. You know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh, this just happened, so therefore, 
all these five things are going to happen. You know what I mean? And now we're not in the moment. We're 10 steps down the road. Right? It's very easy for me to do that. Um, so I, I kind of regulate myself. Like I just I, I, I do enough to kind of know what's going on and, and that kind of thing. But I got to be careful because, like I said, it'll it'll change my whole mood and everything. Right? So just be very conscious of that. Don't get sucked into this world. We are not of this world. We don't have to play by the same rules as everybody else of this world. Right? And we serve a God that knows everything and will help guide us and lead us every step of the way if we choose to walk with Him. Right? that consciousness of the dove sitting on your shoulder kind of thing. Um, all right, verse 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Right? So once again, we're talking about the God of peace. Um, something that really stood out to me right there, and I, I've always missed it, um, but it says, these things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, Right? I never caught that. These do. And the God of peace will be with you. Like we could, we could preach a whole sermon on that. Right? Um, I'm going to jump over really quick to John 14, 12, and 13. And I'll just, I don't have it up there, but I'll just read this to you guys. Because when I hear the these do, I, I think of this. Um, Most assuredly I say to you, this is Jesus, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Well, that obviously ties into what we were talking about before, right? Um, as far as asking, asking in Jesus' name, making sure we're in line with his will. But this is kind of something that stood out to me, and, I, and I'm you know, join me on this journey as we really pray about these things and seek the Lord. Um, but Jesus is talking about doing the things that he did, right? Um, Paul, you know, he's talking these things do um, that you saw the Lord do. Um, that's stuff that I want to explore, you know what I mean? That's stuff that I want to grow in. That's stuff that I really want to seek the Lord about. Um, that's, that's super powerful. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, I've, I've read that scripture before, and I just I never really caught that. Um, I'm going to kind of leave us with that today. I'm not going to explore that too much. Um, but I do want to obviously throw that out there, and, and I want to encourage you guys to really um, dig in and, and seek the Lord um, and seek for direction um, as far as, as following him. And, and why did Jesus give us that command? You know what I mean? Um, that's, you know, there's the understand, some people have the belief system and understanding that, um, you know, a lot of the, the spiritual side of things ended with acts and all that kind of stuff. Um, well, then why is Jesus giving us these commands here? You know what I mean? Why is Paul talking about it in Philippians? Um, so just kind of throwing that out there, like I said, that could be a whole nother sermon. Um, you know, the, the message is, is not really long today. Um, mine tend to be a little bit shorter, but I felt like that's kind of what God wanted us to cover today. Um, we probably do have time for Q&A, but um, we'll, we'll say that for next time. But what I, what I do want to leave you guys with is just really encourage you guys to um, take time out for the Lord. You know, and I, and I used to think, like, for me, I'd struggle with, okay, I need to, like, just tune everything off. I need to go sit under a tree, and I need to, like, just sit there. If that's what it is for you, like, that's cool. Um, but it, I mean, it's, it's just driving in the car, you know? I mean, there's times where the Lord's like, hey, just turn off the music. Like, even Christian, even worship, you know what I mean? He's like, hey, just, just be still. Like, turn off the music. Like, just don't, just spend time with me, you know? And, and what I've experienced, too, is like, as we continue to discern and learn to discern from the Lord and, and communicate and that relationship build, it's super exciting, you know? I mean, like, when you guys, like, meet a new friend, or you're dating somebody, like the deeper that relationship grows, like it's fun, it's exciting. You know what I mean? And, and just, I just gave you, I mean, I could give you guys a million examples, but just those couple examples that we talked about and, and you know, to me are really significant as far as like my work and stuff. Um, but I guarantee you we all have situations in, that li in our lives 
um, that, that we can take to the Lord and get clarity from and, and really get direction from. Um, and, and so um, let's, let's, let's seek the Lord. Let's pray about those things that you guys wrote down. Let's please share them with the body. You know, I'd love to hear God moving. I'd love to hear testimonies. Um, I mean, let's, let's really do this thing together. You know what I mean? Um, so with that being said, I'll just kind of close this out. And We hope that God spoke to you through this message. Our goal at Refuge Church is to assist in the growth of believers within the body of Christ. To leave a comment about this YouTube channel or for more information about Refuge Church, please visit our website at www.refuge-church.net. If you're in the Inland Empire area of Southern California, make plans to stop by and worship and study with us. We're located at 24711 Redlands Boulevard, Suite K, in Loma Linda, California, 92354. Our men's Bible study is on Wednesday nights. Our women's Bible study is on Thursday nights. Our Sunday morning service begins at 10 a.m. And it's also video broadcast live on the web, as well as our audio podcast. You can access these via our website. Thanks again for listening to Refuge Church.